Want to get more sales without being salesy? Well, you've come to the right place. Check this out. This is the Sales Gorilla Podcast. All right, welcome back to the Sales Gorilla Podcast with your host, the Sales Gorilla himself, Landon Porter. Landon, how you doing today, man? I'm awesome, Sauce. Nathan, how you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I am dealing with a little bit of overwhelm. I've been working with you for the last, uh, I don't know, besides doing the podcast, we actually do a little bit of work on the side that you're helping me with my, with my own business. And I'm dealing with a little bit of overwhelm because you've gotten me more work than I can handle right now. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, it's not a bad problem to have, but it's, it's been one of those days where I'm like, oh my God, what a, did I bite off more than I could chew hooking up with Landon over here? It happens. It does. So, you know, this week, actually, you're kind of dealing with a little bit of overwhelm too. You've got Leads Lab launch and I hit you up this morning and I was like, yo, are we going to do the podcast today? And you were like, uh, I don't have anything planned. Yep. It's, uh, it's an interesting position to be in. However, I've gotten a lot better at it the last mm, 10 or 12 months on kind of planning, right? So the only thing that I've got going on this entire month, other than like my, my regular weekly coaching calls with my group and the the call once a week that I have with my mentor and then doing these podcasts. The only other thing I've got is leads lab all month long. So I don't feel overwhelmed. It's just transitioning to doing a different, um, to doing a, a different routine, right? That, that happened to me this week, this weekend. Um, I've been doing basically the same routine for the last two months. And now I've shifted to a new one. So it's kind of like, okay, what's going on? But it's all good. Nice. I have to say, before we even start, I am loving Leads Lab. The stuff that you're putting out there is amazing and transformative. And I'm already seeing results from it. And it's not even officially launched yet. We're just still in the pre-training phase. And I'm already seeing results. And I've, I've noticed a lot of people in the group uh, that is associated with the training are actually seeing results too. So this is, uh, I'm excited for, for this program. I know that when we release this, we're going to be a couple of weeks out of its launch, but man, you just blew me. You've been blowing me away every single day with the stuff that you're putting into this training. I appreciate that, man. Um, uh, it's, it's good to see. It's good to see. We actually had, um, a lot of people having wins in the pre-training week. Um, and I, I didn't expect that, um, which is really cool. And at the end of the day, all it, all it comes down to is, is um, what's your perspective? Is it accurate? Do you need some different insight to take different actions? And that's what we're doing in Leads Lab. So it's, it's pretty cool to watch. Nice. So speaking of perspective, one thing that has come up in a couple of our conversations is the concept of finding problems that people that that people don't know that they have or helping people solve problems oh a good way to get your foot in the door is to help people solve a problem that they don't even know they have and when it comes back to mindset i know that there's a problem that i've i've dealt with and i know that other people out there deal with which is scarcity mindset and when I'm trying to go out and solve problems for people or create abundance in the lives of other people. It's very hard to do if I don't feel that I have abundance in my own life. And I, if I'm desperately seeking clients, I definitely don't have that sense of abundance. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to kind of talk today about how to bridge that gap between not feeling like I have abundance to give and the requirement of needing to give free of any expectations to get clients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, it's really a focus problem. It's, it's what people are focused on. And the bottom line is this, you can't give what you don't have and you can't give when you don't have. It's that whole thing. Um, if your cup's not full, it's really hard to fill up other people's cups. And this is, it's super common, especially, um, 
people who are really good at the thing that they do, they've taken for granted so much of what they're actually capable of doing. And it's easy to get, it's easy to get sucked into that. Um, you know, I, I need this, I need that. I don't have this. I don't have that. And as it applies to client acquisition, if you're feeling need in any way, shape or form, it almost always shines right on through and you, you take a, a bad situation and just make it worse because the people that you're talking to that could be clients are sensing that neediness and nothing ruins a sale faster than neediness, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I've heard you mention, and this is in some of your higher level training, especially you've mentioned this idea of when you try and get your foot in the door, you want to go and, and present a problem that people might not even know that they have that you can help them solve. Why is that important? And how do you do that when you're still stuck in the mindset of, I don't have enough. How can I provide for more, provide more for other people if I don't even feel like I have enough? Usually it's just the shift in perspective we're, we're all really good at the thing that we do, meaning we're able to solve this big major problem that people have. The problem with that is, is their, their mind, their focus is not on solving that big problem. I'll give an example here in a second. Their, their focus is on the symptom or the circumstance that they're dealing with immediately right now that's caused because they haven't solved that big problem. The example that I've been using lately is migraine headaches, right? If I've got a migraine headache, there's a dozen different reasons that I could have a migraine. But if I get migraines on a regular basis, there's probably three or four things that are causing that. Here's the example. If I've got a migraine headache right now and you're a health coach or you're a fitness whatever, and your whole thing is, is yeah, dude, your posture's wrong. You're sitting at your desk all day long, your posture's fucked up, your chair sucks, and you're not doing the right kind of exercise and it's causing this tension on your, on your spinal column and it's causing you migraine headaches. I'm like, yeah, that's fantastic, but it's going to take months or, or even longer to fix my posture issue. This migraine that I'm dealing with right this second, I need a solution to that before I can even think about getting a new chair or a stand-up desk or doing these other exercises or changing my, like whatever, my diet, my shoes, doesn't matter. We are all focused on this big major problem that causes these symptoms and it's by solving the symptom that we're able to get our foot in the door to eventually solve the actual problem. And most of us don't see our marketplace that way. What is the immediate circumstance that our potential clients are dealing with that needs solved right now? And by making that shift, it's a lot easier to go, oh, okay, cool. Instead of me helping you with this thing that's going to take six months to fix, if I can help you solve a circumstance that's caused by that in the next day or two, now you're open and receptive to let's actually solve the problem. Wow, that's such a change of perspective. I want to kind of get into mining for how you can find those, those simple solutions. But before we get into that, I want to maybe look a little bit more at the, the problems of scarcity mindset mm -hmm. and how, it, how can it get a grip on people and how can people break free of that mindset? It is focus. It's interesting how these two seemingly drastically different topics are so overlapped. Here's the, here's the, here's the issue with people who are feeling lack continuing to get more and more lack. Your focus is on you and what you don't have, and that is transmitted. Our, our words and the language that we speak, that's really just a cover-up for our vibrations. And Part of the reason that just being your real, authentic, natural, right this minute, present self works so well in having conversations with people is because it's if you do that, you are actually expressing your vibration, right? And that's what other people are either relating to or feeling repulsed by. So if we're feeling lack and we feel like we need this client, we need this money, we need that job, we need the work, we don't have enough, right? How am I going to make this work? How am I going to make those ends meet? 
And then we're saying something that doesn't match that. The people that we're talking to can absolutely feel it. So it's a focus. And how we get over that is we shift our focus, right? You're feeling lack. You're feeling need. You're feeling all this shit that's gross, right? And other people are, are hoping to have a conversation with you because maybe you're amazing and maybe that could be awesome. And oh my God, you could be exactly what they're looking for. But now you're focused on yourself, even though you're talking about what you can do for them, there's this disconnect. So we need to shift our focus from us and what we don't have or what we think we don't have to actually focusing on them and what they're dealing with. That immediately changes the entire tone of the conversation. It also changes their sense of what we're putting importance on they feel more important than what we're, you know, than, than ourselves. And this is the biggest transference of energy in communication, in being connected with other people that we immediately sense. Oh, I'm not important. I'm not this. I'm not that. Be, regardless of what you're saying, I can feel it. So if we've got rats in our head, right, head trash, shitty mindset, we're feeling lack and need and all of that crap, the fastest way to, to get rid of that is to stop focusing on yourself and focus on the person that you're communicating with. Put all of your focus on them and what they're dealing with and where they're stuck and where you can help them and all of that. And it's all them. And interestingly enough, this is the biggest shift that I see people go through when they go from having fucking weird sales conversations that don't go where they want. They suck. They're awkward. They feel not right to having easy conversations with people to where people go, yeah, I want that. Like, how do I pay you? The difference there is the focus. The focus in that sales conversation is on the prospect or the lead and not on us. Mm -hmm. What's weird about this too is outside of just sales calls, one of the things that I've noticed in my life is if I'm having a bad day and I want to have a better day, I focus on how I can make somebody else's day better. And that usually makes me feel better about myself. It makes my confidence rise, makes me have a better day. If I'm, if I'm feeling like I don't have enough of a particular thing in my life, as counterintuitive as it sounds, I give it away. If I feel like I don't have enough money, I go and I donate money to somebody. If mm -hmm. I feel like I'm not having enough um, people pay attention to me or if I'm not, if I feel like I'm not getting enough love from the people that I care about, I go out of my way to give extra love to the people that I care about. And it always seems to return. Um, what are your thoughts on that? My thoughts on that is we all, and, and I say this myself included, we all take for granted everything that we've actually got. We don't have bombs falling on our heads right now right? We don't have a, a national food issue where we don't have food to eat because it's all poisoned, right? We're not dealing with meteors falling out of the sky, right? Like the shit that we all who, everybody who's listening to this has access to a roof over our head, food and water, right? Like we take that shit for granted. First world problems. Here's, here's the Here's the thing. We're all focused on what we don't have. Frustration and anger come from unmet expectations. Your expectations are in the wrong place because you're focusing on the wrong people. Focus on other people. This is that whole thing in sales, right? You can get anything you want or everything you want by helping enough people get what they want. The only way to do that is put your focus on other people. Nice. Okay. So I feel like if you're dealing with the scarcity mindset, and it's preventing you from going out and giving and helping solve those small problems that can lead to more sales to other people. We figured out some ways to get over that mindset to get to the point where we can actually give that abundance in order to start receiving it. Now I want to kind of circle back to where we started. How are how are we supposed to find those little solutions? What are some things that we can do in regards to mining for some of those things that we can help people with that maybe they don't even realize they need help with? Mm -hmm. So we're all really good at solving this big problem for our clients. We're all really good at, at like world changing views 
right? Whether you help somebody lose 30 pounds or their back pain goes away or you're able to bring in, you know, new clients for a business, like it doesn't matter. You're able to solve this great big giant problem. Well, that great big giant problem in every case has at least three to six circumstantial issues that are immediate things. And the difference between that big problem that you can fix and those immediate issues is those immediate issues can be pointed to, right? Like I can, I've got a splitting migraine headache, right? Sounds and sights and lights and everything. I'm nauseous. You can point to all of those right now in the present moment issues, right? Try pointing to, I can fix your posture so you don't get migraine headaches anymore. It doesn't work. The way we go about this is what's the actual big problem? Well, in my case, it's probably posture and maybe a little bit of my diet. Now, if I adjust those two things over a long enough period of time, I will no longer get migraine headaches. But what is it that I'm dealing with in the present moment? I've got a splitting headache. I'm trying to get my work done. There's like three or four things going on right this minute that if you're actually good at what you do, you can go, ah, how you get rid of a migraine headache right now in the present moment, the shortcut to that is Advil or whatever. And that's the idea. We're all trying to solve this big, long down the road problem and we're not focused on what our clients are dealing with in the present moment. You just break it down to the circumstances that they're dealing with right now. And then you come up with a, ah, so you've got a splitting migraine headache. Interesting. Let me ask you a couple of questions, right? Because we're trying to qualify them to figure out, is it their posture? Is it their diet? Is like, what is it? Are they not drinking enough water? Right? Is it hereditary? What's causing it? So we qualify them a little bit and go, oh, and by the way, one of the fastest ways to get rid of a migraine headache when you're in the middle of one is three Advil, turn all the lights off and go put a pillow over your face and take a three hour nap and you'll wake up and that migraine headache almost certainly will be gone. Now, when that happens, if you're interested in making sure they never come back, we should probably have another conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to kind of make a correlation between marketing and what you do in your world. Um, in marketing, we, we try to do this introductory step, usually through like a lead magnet, and when I'm reading, when I'm writing lead magnets for my clients, I want to, I want to do the easy three. I want to make sure it's easy to consume. It's easy to implement and it offers an easy win. It sounds like those three, those easy three also need to apply when you're trying to reach out and connect with somebody. Exactly. And I call that pillar content, right? The way that I do this is somebody's got a problem with getting clients, somebody's got a problem with their sales conversation, somebody's not earning enough money. Those are the three main issues that people come into my world for. It, there's a simple solution to all three of those. Tied all the way back to what we were talking about earlier, it's where you're placing your focus. That's the simplest way to, to answer all three of those. Nice. Okay. Landon, this has been a fantastic last minute kind of episode. I really appreciate you uh, entertaining the idea. And real quick, before we're out of here, if people do want to get in on Leads Lab, is it still open for the listeners? And if so, or if not, what do they, what do they need to do or what can they expect? It is waitlisted now. Meaning if you go to 30dayleadslab.com, 30dayleadslab.com, you can opt in to be on the wait list doesn't really matter when you listen to this, it's going to be waitlisted. The live version, the doors are closed, but the, the whole process is laid out step by step. So if you're interested in how to actually go get clients, go to 30dayleadslab.com and opt in. And when doors open, you'll be one of the first people to know. Nice. All right, man. Uh, I am looking forward to the next episode. And until then, where can people get their fix if they need some more gorilla juice in their life? salesgorillapodcast.com. Awesome. All right, man. We'll see you later. Peace out, Cub Scout.